Hello, the game is EverQuest. More specifically, EverQuest TLPs, Time Lock Progression Servers, or you can call them classic servers. This video is going to be about the upcoming new release, TLP, in March 2022, and uh, just a general, like, how to get into it, how to get started, some tips and tricks, um, and how to kind of get going if you haven't played EverQuest in a while, or you've never played a TLP. Right now, I'm at the server screen, right? And I don't have a premium subscription right now because I don't feel like burning a chrono or basically spending 15 bucks to uh, to just get on one of these other servers that I've played on previously. So I have found uh, this Vox server, which is a preferred server that you can play for free. It's, it's not highlighted yellow, so that means you can play it as a free-to-play player. And I do have a character on there. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that for this video. Um, and this video is basically a, if you're a new player, uh, you want to get into EverQuest again and you hear about these TLPs and maybe you've never tried one before, they're really fun. And um, I think what throws a lot of people off is they're just like, oh man, EverQuest, it's an old game. Uh, you know, you're like just getting into it and you're just like, eh, it kind of just, there's like this wall there that you got to kind of break through a little bit. And that's kind of what this video is. This video is to help you kind of, get started it's really not that hard to get started in this game the interface is once you get used to it it's actually very good it's a it's a great interface um and the the aged graphics of the game i think are uh, really good so but let me get into the server here okay so here i am in steam font one of my favorite starting zones um and i made this intro already um and I'm going to ramble a lot. There's just so much nostalgia and so many memories. So it's going to be a rather long video. So if anybody is new to my channel or you're just coming upon this video, do not despair. I am the master of timestamps. I will timestamp all the good tips. Just, you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you jump around and you don't want to watch this whole long video. I mean, I got a six hour, seven days to die video out there. Six hours. It's like three movies of tips and trip tips and tricks and stuff so you know you're not gonna hurt my feelings if you don't watch the whole thing it's not the point of the video you consume this content how you want to consume it you want to chill with me and listen to me talk about my memories and and all the little tidbits of information all the little nuggets of gold um that's fine if you just you want to get here and get the information you want and bounce out to the next thing you're doing because you're a busy person and you don't got time for it that's fine too. It's all cool. It's all good. You you do how you want to do. But with that said, I tried to make an intro and it was super long. Super rambly. And that's just because I have so many memories that I want to share. And so much information. So first thing I need to say is I'm just getting over COVID. So I can barely I can barely breathe still. I'm still getting my oxygen levels back and stuff like that. I actually had a pretty rough time with it. Maybe Maybe at the end of the video, I'll discuss that, um, you know, what I went through with it, and, you know, just so you can hear my experiences. Um, but the point of this video is just kind of like, there's a new TLP coming out in March 2022. We don't have any information about what the rule sets are just yet. Um, but in preparation for that, I just want to kind of put out a little tips and tricks video, kind of... There's a lot of people out there that want to play EverQuest and want to give these TLPs a try, but they are not sure. They're not sure kind of what to do, or that maybe they're put off by the barrier, the barrier of entry, you know, of information sometimes is off-putting. Um, so I'm just kind of here to help with that a little bit, as best I can. I have a lot of information. I've been playing these TLPs before they were called TLPs. Um, EverQuest started, I think, their first classic server, basically. Their first TLP was in 2007. Uh, and then the next one was this server that I have this character on. Right now it's on... Um, um, I'm not sure what the server is that I joined, but Vox. Right now it's Vox. But as you can see, back in the day it was Fippy, right? So... When I uh, when I hit level six, you get a little mail email from the server saying, "Congratulations, you're level six now. You're going to lose experience when you die." That was 2011, so February 2011. I think the first server was like 
towards the end of 2007 2008 is when they did their first kind of like classic server so this was like their second one i think I think if my memory serves right and this was even before chrono and stuff like that and i remember that because this cloak cloak of hazy memories i got this in classic i did the quest i remember i was running two accounts this time and i had a tracker i think i had a bard and I think I had the mage. I think it was like a bard mage or a ranger mage combo. I'm not sure. I remember running two two boxes, two computers, and a big part of this was like tracking a rare mob in the Karanas, and I seen it, and I was like, well, that's strange. And I went and I got the drop, and I handed handed everything in, and I actually got the reward, which is the best. This is the best reward possible, and it's kind of out of era. Um, this really good stats for classic, and people were freaking out. Like all the high-end elite gamers were trying to buy it from me. Like I link it in chat. They're like, "That's not real." Like, no, nah, this is like, you know, I got the quest. I was the only one on the server to have one of these. Like, I don't think another one dropped. I think they might have actually went and fixed the quest or something like that real quick. So it was back when they were first starting, starting to get all this stuff um put together you know some of the quests were still available that shouldn't have been available it's very early early on everything's a little more perfected now uh, throughout each each iteration of these tlps you know they found exploits or whatever they would fix them and you know people would find a way to cheese quests to get experience real quick like the bone chip turn in and stuff like that so then they change that so you don't get as much experience when you you can't level all the way up to 50 with it or whatever um yeah, every time they make one of these, they do a little learning, and they fix it. One second, I have to sneeze. So where was I? Yeah, so, um, man, they were offering me tons of money, and I was just like, wow, I got this really rare server. Tons of plat is what they were offering me. I think the high, I think it was roughly like two to three hundred dollars worth of plat at the time. I think it was like, I don't know, I think the highest offer was like a hundred thousand K or something around there. I remember one dude offered me more than anybody had offered me at the point. I remember being all excited about it, telling my wife, and I was like, she was like, sell it then. I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to sell it. I just asked the dude like for a little bit more, like 5K more, 10K more, or something like that. And I figured, I'm going to ask him for a little bit more, and if he says yes, I'll sell it. If he says no, screw him. And dude was like, I mean, he, you know, I don't blame him, but he was like, I'm already offering you way more than I should for this thing, you know, and... In like two expansions, there's going to be better drops that I, that I can get for less. So I was like, this is the cost if you want it. If not, it will. And he was like, nah, I'm going to pass, bro. I was like, all right. So I still have it on my character. I never sold it. But, um, and obviously I stopped playing. I didn't even make it to 60 on this guy uh, before something else came along and pulled me away. Um, but that's why I had so many memories just playing these characters up. Um, for the first couple expansions i do that a lot i've played every single tlp uh release you know pretty much they're doing them every year now and uh i jump on i play as much as i can uh this year i'll probably jump on and only play like a month or two because i'm going to be playing lost ark right because lost ark's coming out next month so i'll probably play lost ark for a little bit and then the tlp will come out in march i'll probably drop lost ark for you know or play it just you know bare minimum I play some TLP because like when the first few expansions come out is when these TLPs are bumping they're full of new people to me that's the best so, yeah, you group with people it's a very social game very social experience like you're, you you come in here on day one this these kobolds aren't going to be here there's going to be a group of people here and you can be like yo can I jump in I'll be like no and then you may you might have to get to another instance and look for another group but there are people playing and grouping and that's what's important um, but yeah, I'm just gonna run around here real quick and look at this stuff. Guy, I, I love Steam Font. Even this, this is a new version of Steam Font. This is not the classic version. Like these skeleton mountains are a little bit different. Or these little skeleton bones are a little bit different. Even I remember this ridge was a little bit different, a little higher up. The windmills are rough. Everything's roughly in the same place. Like you got maps now, right? Let me get the labels off. You, you can use uh, Gina Maps, which I'll explain later. That'll be one of the things. There's there's a lot of little add-ons that you can uh, easily download to make your life easier with these little maps. But yeah, like, Steam Font, 
um, windmills are in the same place, but they're they're different. They're not exactly the same. Like these these bottom pieces used to turn. I remember I used to like climb into them, and that's where I would do my trading on live back in 2000. I'd climb into the middle of these windmills and then drop my stuff, log out, and have another character there and log in real quick. You know that way people wouldn't see it on the ground and snag it. Um, is there anybody in here? I'm the only one in the whole zone. There was somebody in here earlier. But yeah, this is super, super nostalgic for me. Look at all these deeds. This guy, I remember doing his quest on live. Trying to figure out if he gave anything good. So yeah, anyway, this was this was from 2011. It's been, obviously, it's been merged or whatever. Um... Every year they're coming out with new TLPs pretty much in March. Uh, pretty much the anniversary anniversary date of EverQuest is when they're pushing these uh, servers out. Usually they do one or two with different rule sets. Um, but who knows how long they're going to do them for. That's why I like to jump on. You know, I've been, I've been playing these, like I said, since 2007. I think they've been doing them regularly since maybe 2013-14. I'm not sure 100% on that. But they've been doing them almost every year for a while now but who knows how long they're going to do that for so i try to jump on every single one of these and just have some fun with people play at this guy i think he's for the um he's for the wizard epic quest i think yeah and our starfire like this whole front area of steam font here like Let's see, how do I get the, uh, there we go, F10. F10 is the full screen mood. Even this front area here of Steam, the um, Akanon entrance is different, it's changed. But, I've been playing it for so long is what I meant to say, is, like, this has become normal for me. The music, I think, has changed. I don't think this is the classic music, if I remember correctly. Um, but, um... I've been, it's almost, I've been playing these TLPs longer than i played Classic for. Like, I stopped playing Classic when WoW came out. A little bit before WoW, so 2003. Right when Pop came out is when I stopped playing, so. I've been playing these TLPs way more than I've ever played even the Classic game, so. I, I'm kind of nostalgic for the TLPs at this point. It's uh, it's pretty weird. You know, the Steampunk music and the new Steampunk layout is actually... Um, I'm nostalgic for that, you know? Like, these camps here, these are primo camps, by the way. You could probably, as a, like a pet class, handle these guys yourself starting out, but it'd be a lot easier with somebody else. If you're a twink, you could you can rock both of these by yourself. Just take the whole camp. But usually on day one, you, you're trying to, like, team up with people. And, uh, you know, did doing one of these camps, there's usually like a group at this camp and a group at this camp trying to kill everything and sometimes you'll get a group powerful enough to take out both of these but this is a great place to uh, one of my favorite places is Steam Funt starting out either camp here at these cobalt camps or grab that cobalt camp and then kill all the stuff out here level 1, level 2, level 3 stuff while you're looking for group anyway, so um What's my first tip here? Looking for group. That's going to be the first thing we talk about. Um, so, there's ways of doing that, right? OOC, looking for group, level 5, necro, even though that's not what I am, right? You can do that. You do who, all, uh, look for group, nobody, well, nobody on the whole server. Anyway, or, you know, you could, like, manually type this stuff in who all uh, necro looking for group whatever right uh if there are people actually on this server is the age server so there's not that many people on it um let's see list there's some people on it there's 216 people in the general chat so probably probably roughly that on the whole server um but um yeah basically you do the old school looking for a group that's not the best way right you want to do that in conjunction with slash lfg so when you type slash lfg it's not just putting looking for group on your name 
to do that lfg on boom you're looking for group but you can do all that in this lfg interface so let me just turn that off and i'm just going to type lfg slash lfg again brings up the interface i highly recommend using this interface it's going to auto populate the levels in here of what group levels you want so it's only going to show you're looking for group status to uh to people that are group leaders or anybody searching within that level um you could do the same thing groups looking for players right so this is what you're going to see if you're a group looking for somebody um it's just a great way of doing it because you could be like have call of hero um xp you know anywhere you can leave like little quick notes on like that just saying you know boom now i'm looking for group now if i get matches you can see me right so pixel level 56 mage i'm anonymous so they can't see me because i got role play on so my zone will be unavailable that if you're in a zone like if you're near Sibilis or if you're near the zone that you want to level up in or whatever i would recommend taking that off so people can see that you're near there but let's say you're out in some remote zone farming while you're looking for group you don't want to be near where you want to group at at that point i would recommend actually leaving it on because some people might ah oh, he's too far away right even though you might be bound at el guk right so instead of standing near el guk just waiting you want to go off in some some other place and farm some hill giants or something like that but you don't want people you don't want to prejudice people against your location so Sometimes it's smart to leave uh, role play on and just sit unavailable. Um, if you're that worried about it, you can just be like, bound at Elga, you know, update info, boom, you know, um, you know, it'll start getting to the point where people aren't going to be reading that much stuff, but maybe it will help. You know, maybe you can put that for, at first. You know, so basically, you can just put whatever you want that's going to help you get a group or give information or. Maybe you want to be picky, like, only, you could be like, only want fear. Only hate groups. Only hate groups. XP. XP loot. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you want to be picky. You don't want to be bothered because you're farming, you're doing other stuff, and you only want to jump into a hate group or something, and you want XP and loot or something like that. Like, that's fine. Be picky. You know? That's, this is what I like about it. Just, you could give yourself a, um... A little message here to like solicit yourself like having call hero man as a mage big deal because now like when you go in that deep dungeon to find replacements easy because then they just have to come to the zone line you can you can pull them into your group you don't have to worry about like clearing all the way up and then maybe somebody stealing your camp by the time you can clear all the way back down and you don't gotta worry about it you just boom you pop them in call it a hero done easy so that's a big, like, as a mage, I always put that if I have that. Like, hey, I have this spell. Good to go. I could bring them in. Um, you know, whatever information's in here. And then if you're if you're a group leader, you can kind of kind of do the same thing. You can get, you can get uh, look group, group looking for players. You can set yourself up, like, want a good healer. You, you can set all that stuff up. You can... You can filter things out, so you only want a cleric, druid, or shaman only. Um, so you can you can submit as you know looking for for a group, um, and then there you go. Now I'm a group leader. I'm a steam font. I want a good healer, and only clerics, druids, and shamans are going to see that when they go looking like what group leaders are out there. So you have these two windows, right? So these are this is where you set you're looking for group information. This is where you set your group looking for players information. This is your search. So this is where you're going to search for players looking for a group. And then this is groups looking for players. Pretty simple, right? Um, you just got to remember these are four different windows here. So that's, that's what confuses a lot of people, I think. One tip I do have is starting out, bump this up. Like a lot of times this will limit you. So let's say you're level 10 it'll say like max 15 right it'll say something like you're level 10 so 5 through 15 well you really don't want to group with level 5s when you're 10 you really don't so like feel free to bump that up and then like 
you don't really care if you group with um, your level 10. So what's your max level? I don't know. Um, but like whatever the max you can get, like if that's 20, then bump it up to 20. Like you, you don't, you want to be a little bit more on the under level side of a group than you want to be over leveled. Maybe with the exception of being a tank or something like that. I uh, usually want to be on the higher end level of the group just so you can handle the hits a little better, but um, that's a little tip I always do. I, I bump it up a little bit on my group levels, and that way I usually find a group, they'll pull me in at the earliest possible, and then I can spend a lot of time with them level up for hours, and then I'll be at the high end of the group. You don't have to go jump in for a couple hours, and then you out-level the group, and you have to either move or find a new group. So just a little trick there, so... That's the looking for group interface. Highly recommend using it. Um, I think I think that's about it for that. Um, you know, go to, go to where the groups are unless you want to like farm something that's out of the way. Like I said, um, and I think you'll be all right. Next one. Let's get into the next one. A little. Uh, the ooh, did I turn my mouse off? I can't do my mouse. What was which one's that? F F12 is mouse. Alright, let me cut this video here and I'll do the next tip. Okay, the advanced loot filter. Um, I recommend always just making a hotkey for it because you're going to use this a lot. And the hotkey is just slash ADV loot. So you don't have to type ADV loot, I'd make a hotkey. Um, just so you can just so you can get into it. Now, this throws people a lot of beginners for a loop like when people first start playing they're just like i don't even want to deal with it a lot of times and um you know you can transfer it over like the master whoever the master looter is when you're in a group and as an experienced player a lot of times i have my filters set up and everything i'm just like throw me master looter i'll take care of it um and then new players are like ah oh, good and everything gets distributed and everybody's happy first thing you want to do is type slash split um Slash split enables auto split for your coins. So every time you kill something, you'll split it with your group instead of like sucking up all the coins as a leader. So let me kill this. Oh, kill this rat. All right. Think any the rat didn't have any coins. Do shamans have any coins? Okay, there you go. Cha Ching. So you know if you're in a group and you're not hearing that when things are dying. It might be because the leader didn't put on his auto split. So make sure your leader has auto split. It's not rude to say, hey, turn on the auto split. There's no reason for everybody not to do it. Like back in the day, monks wouldn't want it on because queens weighed, weighed uh, weight. They, it doesn't now. It doesn't matter um, how many coins you have. They, they weigh nothing. So there's no reason to not have that on for everybody. Okay, so now we have loot. So what happens is I have it set to hide the corpses when they die. Uh, hide, see off. See, um, so I just don't want to see all the corpses all the time because I don't need to because everything's in a loot filter now. So I just always do hide, see, always, and it'll always hide the corpses except my corpses when I die. Um, so you don't have to see a whole bunch of corpses laying around. Anyway, so we killed some stuff. We have some items in here, and now it's asking what to do. Do I want to loot it? Leave it? A-N for always need it? A-G for always greet it? Never for I never want to loot this. Um, so for like this Rusty, like when I first start, I'll be like always need. And if I hit always need, it would just instantly click that I, that I want to roll need on it. Right now, I'm just going to do never. So now it's now it's because I said never. Anytime a rusty flail is going to come up, the loot filter is just going to say never. Um, you know, I could just do it manually. Like, yeah, I'll take that. Oh, that's a no trade. I don't want that. So I'm going to never that. This is sellable, I think. That no trade stuff. I think this is sellable and it doesn't weigh a lot. So something like this, I'm going to be like always need it. And now that I hit always need, every time that pops up. It's going to drop in my inventory um, because it thinks I always need it. Usually stackable, low weight stuff that I can just sell to the vendor real quick, I'll always need. 
large rat pelts that weigh a lot and take up a full inventory space, I'm going to be like, never. I don't really see a point for always greed. Uh, basically, you're either going to want to set it to always need or never. Um, either want it or you don't. And basically, what the what everybody kind of settled upon, there was some debate back and forth between always need and always greed. Like, you shouldn't always, you shouldn't put need. And then everybody realized that, like, if everybody's putting greed, then you're going to get people that put need, and then they're going to get everything. So everybody just was like, everybody needs money. Everybody can sell it. So just put always need, except for, like, no drop stuff, right? That would be the only thing that you would only want to put always greed or never on or something like that if you don't really need it um, but basically anything that you can sell or make money on just put it as always need if you can if you want to always have it in your backpack that's nobody's going to yell at you that's the socially acceptable thing on the TLPs now that that happened maybe in 2018 ish and I'm kind of glad for that change because between like the for a couple years before that there was like Every time a server would come out, there would be this little, like, social battle of, should it be need, should it be... I mean, I remember one time, I was just like, I had to, like, flop my filters. Like, I had to change everything to greed. Now I joined a group, and that group was need, and so I had to change it. I was like, I'm not doing this crap anymore. I'm not I'm not doing it. Like, it's it's always need, and if you don't like it, you kick me out of group. <laughs> it's like, you know, or if it's always greed, and if you don't like it, you kick me out of group. Like, it just got to the point where it was ridiculous, and then... At, at some point, the society of gamers for the TLPs, like, finally came together and everybody was just like, it's always neat. That's it. Done. So, that's kind of what it is now. It's where it's landed. I'm actually, I actually think it's a good logical rule. There's some debate back and forth, but in the end, everybody needs to sell stuff for plat to buy other stuff, so. Um, anyway, so, other thing you can do here is set all. To leave, you can just loot all, you can set all to never. You can disable your filters, right? So if you just want to kind of disable your filters and then you only have a choice to loot. Like, so there might be some instances like in a raid, you want to disable your filters, your raid leaders might say, Alright, everybody, you know, get, you know, pull your filters off and do everything manually during this raid. Um, you can always go in and edit your filters, just click edit filters. And then you'll be able to see the things that you changed here. So you got always need, always greed, never. Um, when do you want it to auto roll when you're the master looter? Which all should always be yes. If you're the master looter, you always want the stuff to, ro to roll. So I can't show you what it looks like in here. There will be another another segment in here if you're the master looter to always roll or to never roll. So it'll be always need, always greed, never. Always roll, never roll. You basically always want it to roll when you're a master leader. Um, but you can come in here and search for whatever you want. You can merge and replace filters. So like basically, one of the reasons why my filters are usually always set up as a when I join a new server is I'll hit merge, replace filters. I'll pull my filter in from my other character who has all this stuff already set up for all this stuff, and I never really even have to ever touch any of this stuff. For new people coming in, you're going to have to always need, always greed, whatever you want, and then it'll be set like that. And to change it, you'd have to go in and manually change it by going edit filter, search for the thing you want, crude, you know, and it'll show you 10 things that have crude in it. And then maybe I don't want that all the time. Maybe I don't ever want it, you know. Uh, but that's, that's the filter. Um, loot settings, auto split coin. Uh, use advanced you'd want um, auto loot all master loot candidate here we go auto show do loot window so here's one thing so basically what this means in these loot settings here so let me go back so you just hit loot settings you want your auto split on you want to use advanced looting uh, I don't know what confirm remove item filter is that's fine Auto remove looted lure items. I guess that's fine. But this one is important because basically every time loot pops up, this window is going to pop up. So let me show you. Let me kill this. Go ball and get some loot. Uh, so we got loot, but I left it on the ground. So let me kill this guy and see if he... 
Okay, there, there we go. So because um, because I have it set to auto show, but only show on new items, it 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 popped up. I have new items here. Do I want to keep this uh, keep this stuff? I don't want that. I don't want that ever. So this this is good. Auto show, but only with new items. Let's see what happens when I do when I kill him without the just new items. Uh, so I just left things on the ground. I think because I'm not in a group, it's not going to pop up as much. So it's still only going to show new items. Uh, if I was in a group and other people were rolling, all of this would con this window would constantly pop up. So I like to keep it on only show new items. So it's going to roll and do everything that I want it to do, and I'm never even going to see it. Like it'll just it'll just be away. And you don't ever have to worry about it. And that's what actually makes it nice. Um, once you get it set up, you don't ever have to worry about loot. You don't have to worry about like clicking on corpses and looting them. Um, you can just kind of just do whatever you want. Yeah, see, all these are new items. Right? So I'm going to say never, 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 never. And then as you build your um, your filters up, you won't have to be bothered with it. Let me just kill a couple more things. A lot of loot on these guys in Steampunk, by the way. Pathing is still kind of wonky with these uh, things. To see how it's not popping up as much anymore, because I have these filtered out already, so... Um, and I usually have like a loot window. Actually, I, I actually keep my window in my main loot here so I can see rolls and see what's going on with it. Um, and my filters. But that's the advanced loot. Um, it's pretty, pretty in-depth, uh, coverage of it. Sorry I can't be in a group right now to kind of show you what the other, you know, what the other split. But it's basically your decisions and then if you're the master looter, like... Should it roll? Should it not ever roll? I mean, you basically, for Master Leader, you want you want to put everything just to roll, so that your group um, your your group can just roll on it, and things will just roll. And if if you have always need, then you're going to put a roll in it. If you have that, you never want to be bothered with it, then you won't roll on it. And that's basically the way it rolls. So that's that tip. Uh, let me think. What's next? I'm going to clip the video here and then jump into the next tip. Okay, so next tip is the uh, 40 slot, 100% weight reduction pay to win bag in the DB marketplace. So basically, when you have a premium account, you get 500 points, uh, right? I'm actually running kind of low on this account. Uh, I usually have thousands just from built up from not spending stuff. But um, basically, every month you get 500 coins. You can do whatever you want with. Um, let me see. There's all kinds of cool stuff in here, right? So, like, they got all just all kinds. I think I have some weird ones. Like, let me see what I got just to show you real quick. Uh, do, do, do. Like, these things right here, right? I bought these from the marketplace. Meta, Metamorph Wands. And they just change your pets. So, they're very, very good to have as a Necro or a, um, or a Mage. They're just, they're like little pet illusions, right? Um,. I got brownie just for like raids or whatever, or if I'm in a group and I just want a tiny pet, I might actually have to remove that off of them first. And you can use them as much as you want, they're just little clickies that you can buy. And it just makes my pet small, that's all, that way I don't gotta worry about him as much. You can buy stuff on there, change the name of your pet to whatever you want. Um, you know, like I think I had uh, one of my characters was Pixel, it was a mage. And my, my pet's name was Smasher, Pixel Smasher. I thought that was funny. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, there's all kinds of stuff on here for you to buy. But they usually have a bag, a 40-slot bag right here. It's the one that they currently have for... Oh, you can buy that one with DB points? They usually do not have these for sale for DB points. Um, anyway... These are usually cash only, and I guarantee you, you will not be able to buy this for DB points um, when when the new expansion comes out. It'll be like 20 bucks. 
But basically, it's a 40 slot bag. I wish I had, I wish I had a thousand on my account. I'd buy it right now just to show you. But I must have spent a whole bunch of DB points on foolish stuff. Um, you know, just whatever I want. But, um, probably XP pots or whatever. But these are really good to have. Um, they're 40 slot. So it's a bag. It goes right here. 100% weight reduction. 40 slot. Or this one might not be the 100%. 32. Yeah, okay, that's why this one's the DB. That's not the... That's not the 100%. 28. 28. Yeah, so they don't... That's why that's the DB. This isn't the 100%. They do... They will have a 40. They do it every single time. They'll have a 40 slot, 100% weight reduction bag that you can buy. Highly recommend getting it. Uh, it's like 20 bucks. If you're going to play the game for more than a month, maybe two, it's worth it. And it's uh, it's honestly one of the ways that uh, EverQuest makes its money by selling that bag. It's a little bit pay to win because you're buying bag slots that are 100%. But um, it's worth it, and it help. Like I said, it helps the game. It, it helps them release these games out every year. So I would just kind of think of it as supporting the company with something that helps you as well. But to have like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's basically like having four of these all in one bag very helpful especially when you're starting you can just take all the loot like all the fine steel all the bronze you know you can sit in a group and fill that bag up for hours and then when you're done your group you can go sell it to the merchant you get that plat you take that plat you can buy uh chrono chrono is usually pretty cheap and you know at when the game's fresh it's usually cheap a lot of people tend to do that now which spikes the prices up really fast so it's hard to keep up with the price of Chrono as you're making money, but that 40, 40 slot uh, bag helps a lot with that. And it's just very, it's super convenient to have. You don't have to worry about running out of space or being encumbered or anything like that. So highly recommend the 40 slot weight reduction bag. They'll usually also have like this one, 32 slot, 100% uh, weight reduction. They'll have a couple other ones so you can, you can stack up. Sometimes they'll have a 40 slot, 100% weight reduction. That you can buy up to a couple weeks prior and then they'll cancel that and then they'll make a new bag that's 40 slot 100 so if if you wanted to you could spend 40 dollars and have one bag and then the other now these are account bound or heirloom items meaning um you can trade them between your characters but you have to go to the bank stick it in the heirloom slot and then have your other guy go to the bank and take it out so it's not stuck on one character but it is stuck on your account on that server so um, you know, you're not going to be trading it back and forth. Only one character is going to be using it at a time. But the 40% weight reduction bag, definitely pay to win, but definitely worth it. Um, and again, it helps support the company. So I think that's a that's a, that's a a buy. I get that every single time. I, I don't need two of them. Some people go crazy and buy two of them, plus all the other bags. They just love having all that room. I don't need to do that, but, you know, whatever floats your boot. Let me kill this guy. Ah! All right, so let me think what the next tip's going to be here. Okay, so I think the next one is Chrono since I brought that up, and I'm going to take a little, we're going to take a little trip over to GFA while I talk about Chrono. So when I started this character in 2011, there was no Chrono. I think the very next server, I think it might have been like 2012, 13, the very next TLP after this one, I think was when they introduced Chrono. Proto is this right here. This little, this little guy. You can, you can pop one out. You can trade it to another player. You can click consume it. Um, but what Chrono basically is, is when used as 30 day of account membership. So it's it's a premium account uh, thing. You can go into the store. You can buy it. I think they bumped the price up. It used to be like fifteen dollars. It's eighteen dollars now. Um, the premium, I think, is um, membership. Yeah, so premium is $15 a month if you're just buying it with your credit card or whatever. Or you could buy a Chrono for $18, and that's the same thing. It's 30 It's one month, 30 days, uh, but it's tradable to players. That's the key thing. So it's like EVE Online, how they did it with theirs. I, think, I forget what EVE's is called. I think it's actually something similar to Chrono. Um, but anyway, it's basically just a way for a company to 
kind of get in on that black market, right? So what do I mean by black market? Um, so let's say they only did premium. So you, you can put your credit card in here. Uh, don't let me forget about brew walls, right? That's going to be one of the tips. And I think I'm going to forget about it. I just know I am. Um, let's say you put a credit card in, $15 a month, whatever, like Final Fantasy, like anything else. Um, great. You know, or you're a free-to-play player or something like that. What ends up happening is you make money. I make plat, and then plat buys items. So what people will do is they'll go online and they'll sell their plat. They'll, a you know, eBay. Nobody actually uses eBay now because, actually, that's I don't want to get into it, but that's Sony. Sony EverQuest is the one that kind of like hit eBay real hard back in the day for selling online currency. So because of that, eBay became like the they 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 set up rules. They didn't want to get sued. So other websites popped up, and now everybody uses other websites instead of eBay for that kind of stuff. But basically, you sell your plat, and you uh, for real money, right? So maybe it's uh, ten thousand plat for ten dollars or something like that. I don't know, um, but that happens um, regardless. So that's we'll call that black market, gray market, whatever you want to call it. The old wizard spires, spires. Um, they were amazing back in the day. Just like, what the hell? Now they got the Nexus. Oh, we can get to the Nexus. Ah, she's gonna port me. I don't want to go there. Oh, I didn't want to get to the Nexus. Um,. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a method of trying to get in on that, right? So if you're a company and you got these people just siphoning the wealth of your game and you're not seeing a penny of that, like, how do you, how do you combat that? Well, let's sell in-game subscriptions for money and make it tradable. And that way people have a currency other than the plat that they can sell um, that's worth a subscription. That's worth a premium so like i said evil online does it they've been doing it for a while other games have done it. i think it's honestly i don't like it i'd rather just have it pay with your credit card or don't i'd rather have it old school like that but with the reality of today and you know the game markets the way they are and players want free free games right they want they want it this is what this is what the players want they don't want to have to use their credit cards i don't like that paywall that i like um, so it makes sense. I understand it. It's a business choice that you have to do. So it does change the game dynamic a little bit because now, like my mindset is like, when I get some when I get some plat, I'm gonna want to use that plat to buy Chrono while I can because I know Chrono is gonna uh, raise in value as plat decreases in value. The Chrono will raise in value. So because I know that, because everybody knows that, they're gonna want to invest their plat into chrono whereas otherwise i would take that plat and i would like buy the best gear that i could buy so a lot of times i'll sacrifice having the best gear so i can have a couple extra plat or chrono because i know that chrono if i can buy 10 chrono in the first month that 10 chrono i might spend like the first one i might spend a couple hundred plat on and it might jump up to 500 and then a couple thousand Yes, yeah, so I might spend 10k plat for 10 chrono um, on the, in the first month or something, but then those 10 chrono are going to be worth a hundred thousand plat in like the next month. You know what I mean? So, and then they're going to be worth 300 thousand after that. So the and then when I leave the game, like I left this game, I had a little bit of plat, and I'm sure I had more chrono. Oh, actually, in this server there was no chrono, so I didn't have any chrono. But, you know, when I leave the game, I come back, I got 16 chrono. This is actually a low amount. I, I, I got rid of a lot of my chrono um, the last time I played. I had, like, a couple hundred, hundred. I think I had, like, 100 or 150 or something like that. And then, you know, I traded some off. I, I was a little frivolous. Bought some things that I didn't need. You know, three chrono here, five chrono there, ten chrono here. Um, just because I had some extra. Um... And, you know, I, I try to keep a little bit just so I can get started. And I'm, I'm a little frivolous, like, you know, just so I can have a couple months of subscription. 
and then maybe buy some banded armor or whatever, maybe buy a decent weapon just to help get started. I usually don't spend a lot of chrono. I usually make more chrono than I spend, um, just because I'm a little bit frivolous with that. Um, and, and that does ruin it a little bit. Like, I wouldn't do that if it wasn't for chrono. Um, but it's the smart way to do it now because there is chrono, so... You know, it does change the game dynamic, at least for me, a little bit. But I think in the end, it's not it's some evil thing. It's not super pay-to-win any more than anything else is, any more than selling plat on a black market is. Um, it's just a way for the company to get some, get get a piece of that pie. Because every single chrono, even black market chrono, even if you go to a website and buy it for $10 instead of $18, or $12 instead of $18, or whatever it goes for, even if you get to a black or gray market and buy that chrono, at some point that chrono came from the game company for $18. Like at some point somebody took their credit card and bought that chrono legit. And yet, yes, maybe I have 16 and I want to go sell them on the black market. I, mean, I can't charge full price for them. So I got to undercut the actual market. So yes, they do get undercut. But at some point, these 16 were paid for full price. So they got that money. You know what I mean? So, regardless, you know, that there's extra chrono out there floating around, they made that money at some point um, without having to actually give the subscription, the month subscription, you know. So I got 16 months of subscription on just this account. I probably got even more on my other account. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's viable. It works. It's not the devil. It is what it is. Um, but that, that's basically it. I think I think it confuses a lot of people, but it's basically just a subscription that's worth money, and it gains in value as plat decreases in value, right? So, like the first day or two, a chrono is worth 100 plat, which is roughly a set of banded. So you know, if I'm playing a melee character and I, a tank, and I want to be a badass tank on day one, I'll you know I, I'll easily give somebody a chrono for a set of banded. Um, not a problem day one day two something like that but you'll see like after day two day three day four like it'll start expanding even more like it'll be worth two sets of banded for one chrono or something like that like chrono will start being able to buy more like it'll start costing more plat um, it'll quickly go up to 500 plat per chrono a thousand plat per chrono I think it usually like stabilizes at a thousand, and then it does a nice big jump to fifteen to two thousand. Um, I think within the first expansion, they're usually five to six thousand chrono or plat per chrono, and then they usually you know jump to ten to twenty. You know, as expansions go, it's easier to make plat. It's easier to farm. Uh, people have more time to grind that pl those plat faucets and stuff like that. Um, you know, so as more plat comes into the game, cr chronos uh, cost more. You know, in the end, like in the end expansions, I think they're like 300,000 plat per chrono. So they they only go up. Like they own, they're they only going to go up. At when, when they first came out, a lot of people didn't realize that. Like I realized it on the, the first, first server I played that had chrono. I was like, what the hell is this chrono stuff? And then I seen the prices going up, and I just, I, as soon as I seen the prices going up a little bit, I realized, like, ah, okay, this is the premium currency, so this is always going to go up more than, you know, plat. As people get more plat, this gets more value. I, like, instantly was buying. I was, I made so many chronos at first couple TLPs just because a lot of people didn't realize, like, you know, they were just buying Chrono with their credit cards and selling it to get Plat because they wanted to buy stuff with the Plat and whatever. Uh, people people that were smart enough to realize, you know, oh, this is going to keep going up. We, we bought so much of this stuff, it was ridiculous. Now everybody knows. Everybody knows. So the prices shoot up really fast. Now that everybody knows, like, invest your extra Plat into Chrono. Even if, you, even if you're not going to use it, you're just going to resell it later. Like, you know, if you can buy a chrono for 500 now and then sell it for easy for 5,000 later, why wouldn't you just do that? Why wouldn't you just sit on it like a stock? Um, anyway, here's the Bandit Sisters. Very good, very good camp. If you're new, level, what is it, 10-ish? Level 7? Yeah, so if you're level 7, 8, 9, 10, great little camp here. I think they dropped some bronze. Um, 
nice little XP. What is it? Five of them, I think. One, two, three, four. And then this fifth one over here. Bandit lookout. What are they? Seven, level seven and eight. Great little spot. Usually pretty camped. I'm just going to throw it in. I might not do a timestamp for that one, but here it is, right? Here's the wizard spire. Here's the, uh, here's the zone. And there's the camp. And then here's the tree city. So, right there, nice little spot. To kill these little bandits. I don't know what faction. Let's see what faction they. Probably good faction, I'd imagine. Look at that nice little belt pouch, some blood, some meat. Did they get any faction hits? Huh, didn't even get a faction hit, seriously. Hmm. Didn't even think they would have a faction. There's no faction hits on them, so that's nice. They're just little bandits. Um, yeah, so that's Chrono. Not evil. Not not a big deal. I'm going to run over to this other camp, so... Another spot if you're in G... Uh, Fade Arc. What's the whole thing called? Uh, what the heck? What's your block? What is going on here? How do I make this bigger? Blood Falls. What is Blood Falls? I don't even know what that stuff is. Must be different expansions. Uh, what is the name of this whole area here? I keep forgetting. Is it Fadark? I think for some reason I keep thinking it's Fade Arc. Anyway, um, the the whole Fade Arc area, Akadon, Steam Font, um, Butcher Block Mountains. It's it's just a great area. Um, it's a really good area for uh, leveling. And now I can't. Why is it stuck on Butcher Block? Current. There we go. Um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to show you, so here's the, here's the town over here, right? The famous elf, wood elf town, the tree city. Good area to start, just sit out here and kill, uh, low level mobs by the ramps here. But, just wanted to show you where everybody kind of goes. I'm a little slow, I got my J-boots on. I should have grabbed a server where I have one of my bards leveled up. So this is a good area for like level 1, 2, 3, get some bone chips and stuff like that. And then when you're like level 2 or 3, run up here and get at work camp. So right in here, right outside of um, Crushbone is the work camps, which is a great spot to level up to like maybe 5, 6. And then once you're done with the work camps, you should be big enough to go into... Crush Boon, level 5, level 6, and uh, sit at the wall and camp. So, a really great starting area. If you're in Steam Font, you got the little starting area. You can kill the starting guys, sit at the Cobalt Camps till about level 5. You can do Cobalt Camps to like level 3, 4 if you wanted to, and then roll over here and try to group here. Honestly, if you have a Cobalt Camp, I would just stay there until about 5, and then run over here. Either get a group here till six or seven, which is really pushing it for this camp, or get into Crush Bone. But this is a really nice camp because you got you got mobs over here, mobs down here. If you run out, you got tons of mobs here. You got four of them there, two there, four over here. So sit right here this is a great camp or camp. Really, really great camp. Stay away from these guys, they'll stun the crap out of you. Um, you know, unless your group's really rocking and rolling. And then, when you're ready, good to go, you can roll up in here. A lot of times these guys are higher level. Yeah, so they're level 10. So I just, like, just run past them like, ah, ah, and run into the zone. Did my, uh, pet spear? Where's my pet at? Why did he start attacking that dude? 
Anyway, one thing I loved about EverQuest is how mobs will just chase you forever. Unless you zone. Excuse me. Unless you zone. Is there anybody in here? Uh, da, da, da. So yeah, you can come in here and you can start knocking these guys out. These guys are level 7 in the courtyard. Alright. Level 4. Level 3, level 4. Level 6. So 3, 4, 6, 7. So I wouldn't come in here until without it would it group until you're like, um, you know, 5 or 6 maybe. But right here is usually where you group at. You start killing these guys. Let's see. Level 1. Yeah, these sense. Like level 9. So yeah, once you're like level 6 or 7, you want to come in here. Start killing. You come up here. You kill these guys in here. Kill these slavers. are usually higher level. 12. Got the wardens. Warden got any drops? Yeah, the warden's level 14, so 12, 14. You don't want to take them on unless you, you got a solid group going. There's some dudes in here that you can kill. You got the slavers in there. And then around here, you got this whole camp up in here that you can pull from as well. Usually this is a whole separate camp, but a lot of times people aren't in here camping. But you got some legionnaires. 12, um, Centurion, uh, level 7, pretty, pretty good stuff. Now, the other spot that usually, I don't know, well, my microphone is bouncing up and down, something's shaking the house. Usually, um, you'll, a group will either come here and start, like if it's a new group forming for Crushbone, or they'll come this way usually there's not going to be a group out here in the courtyard You're usually going to have single people looking for group killing these guys or maybe du duos um one other spot there's actually two other spots that are popular is coming up here and doing this little camp up here is a decent camp um this is like the newbie-ish newbie-ish newbie of the camps there are uh, loot droppers up here, which is nice when you're starting out, but you only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven mobs, and then that's it. And while that seems like a lot, because they're all right here, it's nice and easy, you get way more at the other spot or along here at the wall. And also, if you're down here at the wall and there's a lot of people, you can pull from up, pull from up there as well. But usually what you'll do is you'll sit right here. And then you have these guys, these all guys over here to kill. You can pull from the slaver pits down here where they got some higher level uh, slavers, level 11. Um, and then you got all those to pull from. You can pull from around the back of the castle. Um, you can pull from in here. Lots of guys in there. And then if you're clearing all this stuff out, you, you'll, you can start coming in here and pulling these guys. Um, you know, uh, usually they'll be getting taken care of by the group in here in the throne room. But most of the time the throne room is just worried about these guys. Right, so level 13, level 10, level 15. Um, usually the throne room is not too worried about anything outside of here, but you can filter some and, you know, pull these two guys, pull that guy. Kind of thing if there's if there's a throne room group in there so the wall is usually the best xp like right here so you're gonna have the best results secondary on the other side of the zone or up on the top there but the uh, crush bone is a really great great spot if you started on uh the fate arc side of things um why, why can't i remember the name of the continent it's eluding me for some reason Anyway, that's great. Uh, good, good spot there to uh, fight. Kind of, I guess that's kind of a tip. Let me uh, let me think what my next tip's gonna be. All right, sorry, had a coughing fit from COVID. Um, anyway, so my next tip. Let me redo this. Is uh, basically just gonna be some basic interface stuff. Uh, find the parcel vendor. 
Um, what else can we cover? Weapon augments. So I think we can cover all that kind of right here. So you're coming out of Clan Crush Boon. You're full of loot. You got stuff to do. You want to go to the bank. You want to sell. What do you do? Uh, let me see. Control F. There we go. Control F or hit this find button right here in your actions. Basically, the find works really well in this game. Um, it'll show you everything that you would possibly want. Zone connections, satchel vendors, parcel, and town crier and parcels. Um, now, parcel is always going to be next to the banker. So you can either search for a banker or parcel vendor. Let's do, uh, let's just go ahead and do parcel. So it'll just, even, even if it's elevated, it's going to show me the path. Like it's going to take me to a path. Like now I can go up this elevator right here. Um, or I can, like I could go up the elevator and then go this way. Or I could just follow it to the elevator, the lift that it wants me to go to. So I'll just follow the path. It'll disappear when you touch it, when it like intersects. That's when it will disappear. Like if you're like walking on it. <laughs> But it's old school, but it works. It works pretty well. The old priest of Discord. Check him out, just chilling. Hey, bud. Old school priest of Discord. So it wants me to go up this elevator. Or lift, I should say. So again, that's control F or just hit find and you can hit end find. I think it's on the map as well. And I think there's usually a find in here somewhere. I think I got it shortened. Uh, I thought there was a find button on the map. Maybe, maybe there's not. Anyway, I don't remember how to get there. I know it's somewhere this way, but it doesn't matter because I could just follow it a little duty do. And it'll take me right to, there we go, Bank of Kelethon. And there's the parcel vendor right there. Bing! Now, the parcel vendor is basically just a mailing system. So he's a vendor, so we can get rid of some of this crap that we had, right? I don't want that. I don't need that. I don't need a sewing kit. I don't need these rat ears. Um, but what you can also do is send stuff, right? So parcel, um, maybe I should have sold, sent some of the junk that I had. Where are we the kids? There's all the stuff that I got. Here, I'll sell it. I'll send a, I'm going to send this to, I don't know. Um, I'll send it to a wrong person and it'll probably won't let me. So, as you know, I got 50 of them, but it didn't tell me to select it. When you hit send, it'll ask you how many do you want to send. I'll send one of them. And then once you hit that, it puts one in there. Done. Unfortunately, I do not know anybody in the name. Here is your thing back. So if you send it to the wrong person, he's just going to give it back to you. But basically, that's how it works, right? Select the item you want, type the name of the player that you want to send it to. Let me see. Do all. Uh, knuckin' Futs? Knuckin' Futs, okay. Okay, Knuckin' Futs. Knuckin' Futs. Hi, testing parcel vendor. Send. I didn't want to send one of them to him. Done. I will deliver your malachite to Nuck and Futs as soon as possible. That's it. And there's no COD, so you got to be careful. Cause so basically, a lot, a lot of times you'll be like, all right, send me this, and I'll send you plat. You can send plat, too. Like, you can hit your quantity of plat. You put it over here. Deposit it down. And boom, sending that to Nuck and Futs. So I just sent him a plat and a Malachite. So, you know, 
Um, a lot of times you'll be like, all right, send me the plat and I'll send you the item or send me the item, I'll send you the plat. That's all based on trust. People can rip you off, so you got to be careful. Now, the good thing is that has happened. People have ripped people off before, but it's, it's not that common to get ripped off like that. Just, um, just use your best judgment. Me personally, I don't like getting ripped off, so I'm like, nah, you send me the item and I'll send it to you. And if they're like, I'm not good with that, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be like, I, I completely understand, I get it. You know, if you want to come in person and we can just do a normal trade, then we can do that. But otherwise, I don't want to go first is usually my stance. Uh, most people just, they don't care. They'll just be like, all right, whatever, I'll go first. You know, I'll take the chance. So that's the uh, parcel vendor. Very handy vendor. They're always in conjunction with a banker. Um, let's see what I got in my thing. Oh, I got my Peggy cloak. Look at that. I was working on my epic. Nice. I have two or three mage epics in, in the course of various TLPs. Looks like I went to Sky. Did some Sky raids. What's this stuff? Uh, these are little things. Little things I bought off. Um, I bought these off of. Um, makes you look like the fool. I bought these off the DB. DB. G store, what's it called? Yeah, Daybreak Game Store. Just stuff I bought a long time ago. Little, like, illusions. Like, this one puts bats around you. This one puts crystals under your feet. I don't know what the skull they've used is. It just looks like a little thing. Sorry, I'm just going through my bank. I'm just curious. What I have in here. More sky stuff. Keys. Sky keys. Probably back before they had keychains. Some resist gear. Throwing boulders. It's like some spells. The hell? Goblin ears. Keys to various doors. That was a busy little name. I, d I do remember on this server, I I farmed glowing black stones. Like like there wasn't anybody doing it, and I must have farmed twenty to thirty of these things and just sold them for a crap ton of plat. And then use that plat to buy Chrono. Uh, no, 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 just no. There was no Chrono. I would have used it to buy Chrono if they had Chrono on the server. But I do remember I was just farming the heck out of those things. I just got so many. I was like, that's when I learned. I was like, wow, these things are ridiculously easy to get once you know how to get them. And I, it just made me realize, like, wow, those people back in the day were making a killing off these uh, glowing black stones. They were not worth anywhere near what they sell for. Um, just because they're so easy to get once you know how to get them. Anyway, um, yeah, so banker, parcel vendor, and what was the other one? Oh, the, um, there are augments for your weapons if you're melee. So, basically, in pretty much every town, uh, is there an augmenter? What does it go by? Maybe, so it says, show only destinations I can use. Let me click that off. I want to see everybody's bards. Maybe it's in the description. Weapon. What would it be under, like, weapon augmenter? Nah. I thought it would just be, like, augments. Hmm. What was that? Weapons? Oops. He was down. Where am I at here? Where's the bank? There's the bank. I thought there was a down. I thought the augmenter was down here. Let's see if I can find him without the find. There he is. Melee augments. I knew he was close to the bank. What's his name? Gem crafter. Gem. Oh, 
Yeah, there he was. It's called Melee Augment. Category M Melee Augment. Gem Crafter. So that's where it's at. Melee Augment. But yeah, he's right close to the bank. So basically, um, showing the items I can use because I'm a caster. Basically, what you do is buy these for a few hundred plat. Starting at level 10, 35 plat, 20, 75 plat. 30, 150 plat, 40, 300 plat, and at level 50, 60, uh, or 600 plat. Uh, these are lure, so you can only have one at a time. So basically, when you hit level 50, you're going to want a level 50 one, uh, and a level 41, or a level 50 of one type, and a level 50 of the other. Um, if I remember correctly... Yeah, this one's the dot, which is not that good. Um, what's this one? This one heals you. Or like a, it's like a heal DD. So there's a, there's a dot. There's a direct damage that has a stun component. Then there's a heal, which is like a direct heal. And then, then there's a, a damage over time heal or hot, I guess you could call it. Uh, this one... That's the, the hot, the heal over time. And then this one is the, yeah, the direct damage. So it gives it like a proc to your weapon. Now, this Wolf Knight is like the best one because it's like a direct proc, right? Uh, it's a 70 point damage proc. But it does have a stun component on it. So be aware of that. These are great for tanks. So if you're a tank, you're going on the Wolf Knight at 50 and the level 40 segment uh which is a little bit less damage it's 55 you would want to probably put that in your offhand just for extra extra taunt if you're like a warrior or something like that i usually i think i go with um i, I it really depends sometimes i went with the wolf knight and then in the offhand i'd go with the heal uh sometimes i just went pure heal like in my main hand i go with the heal proc like the heal dd and then on the offhand i'd go with the heal hot because it heals you for a little bit more but it's over time but since it's in your offhand it's gonna be procking less i don't i don't know use whatever you want but just know that the wolf knight does have a stun component to it so it does provide more aggro than if you're going to use like the dot uh, you know um the dot damage one but good to have it's you know it's pretty cheap for the gems and you can pop them out and pop the new ones in as you level up um but melee augments are nice to have a lot of people don't know know about them and they definitely increase your performance like you know you're you're procking with your yak plus you're procking with your gem that's in your yak plus you're procking with your off hands it just helps a lot all right so now let's see what can we get into now so free wall maps um let's let's deal with that real quick okay so i'm at www.eqmaps.info I have no idea. I just typed in Brie Wall Maps in Google. Um, but Brie Wall Maps, this is what you want. Um, basically, what it does is it just gives you a better map than what the default is. And a lot of times, the default doesn't even have a map for the zone. So, um, you know, I guess it's EQ map file. Yeah, here you go. Download. Um, download the zip. Unzip it into the EverQuest folder basically is all it is um but once you do that let me zip out of this real quick once you install the actual brie wall file when you hit your m key i think it's m for me i don't know what the default is but you'll see here in your map you have default and you'll have brie wall just just select it on brie wall and it'll just always when you go to a zone select the brie wall version and they're a better map, they have better labels, um, they have better drawings, and for a lot of maps on default, like for default, this one's fine. Like this this the default one in here works just as well as the Brie Wall. But for a lot of areas there is no default map, it's just blank. So you definitely want Brie Walls installed. It's perfectly legit, it's perfectly legal. Uh, you don't gotta worry about uh, you know. Um, Sony getting mad at you for installing it. It's 100% legit. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it whatsoever. 
Next one is Gina, which is a little more complex. Okay, so for Gina, it's a program called Gina. Here it is. This is basically a log reader, log parser. 100% legit. It's good to use. You're not going to get banned for it. Um, you want to double check, go on the forums, ask the mods, you know, is it okay to use Gina's? Log parsers are complete, completely fine to use. Now, I was using uh, something woof, like Lone Wolf's, uh, something like that. It was like a little log parser. And this one, I didn't use it for a long time because it's a little bit complex for me. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to just install the program, hit add. When you hit add, it pops up. You want to select your log file, right? So for me, it's C users, public, daybreak game, install games, EverQuest logs. In your log folder, your logs are going to be called eqlog underscore name underscore server. So in this case, I'm on the Vox server. My name is Pixel now. So you just select that file and that's it. It's going to, you can hit monitor on startup, meaning it's going to monitor that log file when you start up the game, put your character name in there, all this stuff will automatically fill out. And then you can put your uh, phonetic for your name, pixel, you know, however, you know, if you have a weird name, um, Gina, this is what Gina stands for. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I will let Gina pronounce it. Gimmagux Incantatory Notation Apparatus. Yeah, so that's Gina. Gimmagux Incantatory Notation Apparatus. Very gnomey. Such a gnomey name, I love it. Um, I usually bump up the speed a little bit. Gimmagux Incantatory Notation Apparatus. Gimmagux Incantatory Notation Apparatus. And the reason why I like it fast like that is because I have some custom triggers in here. So, as you can see, I've used this for Project 1999. Um, Project 1999 has different text for things so like when you join a group in project 1999 um variable has joined the group right is what it's going to be looking for um versus if you join a group i don't know if it would even be i think i got group joins in here um and a lot of these i've created myself some of these i've pulled from other people um, people, you can share these, like these dragon timers came from one of the raid guilds that um, that I joined. And it has like different timers for different, you know, bosses set up. So what it does is it searches for a uh, Dracolich begins to cast a spell, rotting flesh. It searches for that and then when it sees that, it's going to trigger this and it's going to say rotting flesh cast. And then it's going to begin a timer for 35 seconds. So I'll put a bar on your screen showing you a 35 second countdown. And then when the timer ends, it's going to use four seconds before it ends. It's going to say rotting flesh soon, meaning that he's about to recast it. And then nothing happens when it ends. So it's basically a lot of little things. You can use it to set up timers. You can use it to track like boss stuff. It can get really complex. But what I use it for is, you know, just, just a lot of little little features. Like, like here's my commons, right? So, invis dropping. So, I have it to search. I put this in. My trigger name is called invis dropping. I have it set to search for any text in the log that says you feel yourself starting to appear. It has to be exact to make sure, you know, whatever you're looking for is there. And then when that happens, I display a text. It's going to pop up in my screen where I want it to, and it's just going to say invis dropping. And then I also use text to speech um, invis dropping on C. So bracket C bracket is character. So it's going to say invis dropping on pixel. But if I was on my shaman, it would say, you know, invis dropping on shammy McCammy, you know, or something like that. Um, so it's, it's pretty customizable and it lets you, you know, test things out. Invis dropping on pixel. So that way, when I'm running around, I don't always have to eyeball the chat. Um, <clears throat> it'll just tell me things. On pixel. Like, oh, I see the bar popping up. The thing, invis is going to drop. Um, it'll tell me when my invis is off. Invis off. Oh, no, my invis is off, you know. I'm running around and get rooted. Sometimes you run around as a pooler. All of a sudden, you can't move. You're like, what the hell? Why can't I move? You didn't realize you just got rooted. Rooted. So it looks for that. Your legs feel weak. If it sees your legs feel weak... That means I just got rooted, 
it's going to tell me. Uh, this one, if you play a bard, you're going to hear this one a lot. Stun. 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 That's going to be you Stun. tanking. Stun. Stun. <laughs> Stun. 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 Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> um, so I just have these. These are my commons. Um, you know, if, if I con something, it, it has uh, a rare creature tag, it'll tell me. Rare mob S1. Uh, basically, these little variables, how you can create these. So it's bracket S1 bracket, a rare creature bracket S2 bracket. So S1 just means like variable 1. S2 just means like variable 2. So you're telling it to store any text that's out in between, that's outside of this a rare creature. And any text out on this side. So anything pre, anything post. I'm telling it the store is variable S1 and variable S2. So I can bring that back. So it's searching. It's searching for that, right? I just put this in here so I wouldn't forget it. And then basically what I have it saying is when I see it says a rare creature, it's going to display a thing that says rare mob. And then I guess this is like the mob's name. The, poop, the pre stuff is the mob's name. So I have it saying rare mob and then the rare mob's name. And I also have it text to speech. So it will be like rare mob a frenzied ghoul right is what it would say because it's going to store the s1 data so that's all s1 s2 is you can just keep using like s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 s6 x7 just think of it as like variable and that's that's how that functions so it's very easy to write these if you just know what the trigger is and understand that you can put a variable in there and then use that variable to call it back if you need it to rear mob s1 that's all that is it's very very simple pick shutdown sometimes when you're in a pick and I'll explain what picks are later the zone will shut down in 15 minutes so a lot of times I'm chilling in a pick and it's going to shut down and I'm not reading chat or I miss it or I'm busy so this kind of thing just helps me like pick shutdown it's just gonna be like oh you know you know um, if I con a mob and it, you're invisible sometimes you miss that it says you suspect that this being can see you so it's just a little trigger see in this like kind of mob and I'm invisible, I know that that mob uh, can now see invis. So it's just little, little triggers. These are two custom ones that I worked on uh, uh, a very long time ago, and they still work. Hesitant to even share these. They're a little complex, and it took me a long time to figure out how to get this to work. But this is one of the main reasons why I use um, why I use Gina mostly. I like to have the game read text to speech. Uh, New World had this by default, which I really liked. Um, it wasn't very customizable, but New World had text to speech for like groups. I like I like to have that thing reading what other what groups are saying to me. So I'll go ahead and share it with you guys. Uh, it's a little complex, but basically this is group speech. So anything in group, it's going to talk. So when your team, when your group talks to you. Um, it's going to talk. It's going to use text-to-speech. Uh, I'm not going to even try to explain what a lot of this stuff is because I forget half of it. Um, but basically, it's removing a lot of these things that uh, NPCs might say or something. And it's just removing them and then saying all the other stuff. So basically, in the end, it's searching for this text. It's filtering out some common things that NPCs will say, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't give you the NPC crap or your pet crap or anything like that. It isn't going to spam you. And basically, what it says is like if you have a character in your group named Bob, and Bob says hello, it'll just be like uh, Bob, hello. That's it. So it it just basically I don't have to read the text uh, for my group, and I also have it for when somebody comes in with tells. So this is the tell one. It does the same thing. Gets rid of the crap that maybe like your pet might tell you or something. But basically, uh, Bob tells you, boom. That's what it's going to say. Uh, so if somebody says, hey, what's up? You know, I'm going to get a thing that says, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? Um, and that, I love that. Dollar chart tells you, yes. So it's going to be like, uh, Bob tells you, hey, what's up? So it's that way I don't miss tells, I don't miss group chat, I don't have to sit there and read the chat as much, um, I can pay attention to other things, and uh, I, it, it works really great. So these are my common triggers, 
Um, I have class triggers, right? So I have mage specifics, burnout wearing off, shield, flame shield wearing off, dominate undead, my, my, my aggro drops when I feign death. You know, you can add whatever, whatever you want. Let's see what I got in tanks. Yeah, so, you know, it gives me my taunt status. You already have your taunt attention. It'll just be like, have aggro. Like, when I try to talk, when I try to taunt and I already have to aggro, it's going to let me know. Like, you you already got aggro. Um, what else do I have in here? Did I do commons already? Yep, commons. Old camp checks, loom rules, raids. Uh, what else do I got? Common caster stuff, so fizzles. So when I fizzle, fizzle. I hear that. Um, when my gate fails because it's unstable, gate unstable. I now have to recast it. I'm trying to cast something, but it's not working because I'm out of mana. Mana. It's just gonna be like mana, mana, mana as I'm trying to cast it. Something's out of my range. Out of range. Uh, oh, like I get closer. Yeah. You know? My spell got resi resisted. My spell got resisted. Well, it's going to S1 creature resisted your S2 is spell. So I'm just going to be like, um, I don't care what the creature is, so I didn't put that in. But I just want to know what the spell is. So Root re was resisted. Mez was resisted. You know, whatever my spell is, it's going to tell me. S2 resisted. My spell was resisted. Whatever that spell was. My spell's interrupted. My spell worn off, which is really great for like mezes and buffs and stuff like that. Um, I also use it to keep track of auctions sometimes. So like, you know, um, here's a... I put this in a comment because I wanted, as I was building it, I just popped it, copied and pasted this. So Sherry Auction, Willing to Soak, Chrono, 1700p. So I just basically broke that down. S1 is Sherry, Auctions, S2 is just any junk between here and here. WTS Chrono is what I'm really having it look for. And then anything after that as S1. So basically, it just alerts me, Chrono Seller, S1. So, Chrono Seller, Sherry. It's just going to alert me that somebody's selling Chrono. I'll have to go back and it's not complex enough to parse out what the plat is. I mean, you could probably make it that complex. I just didn't want to. So that basically, it's just going to give me a little alert. Chrono Seller, S1. You know, Sherry. Chrono Seller, Sherry. Chrono Seller, Bob, whatever. But you could just use that. I use that to keep... Um, like I wanted to buy a glowing boon collar probably. So I just put that in there, right? So just kind of give me an alert that somebody mentioned a glowing boon collar. So I use that for auction sometimes. Um, but basically, you know, my general caster stuff, my class specific stuff, my general uh, for all classes, my common stuff. And then, you know, raids. I don't have a lot of raids in here because usually when you join a raid guild, um, they're going to they're going to give you their timers that they want to use that are on you know using the same whatever they'll share them with you. So I usually don't have them in mine per se. What are these camp checks? So somebody says out a character, blah blah blah, CC blah blah blah. Basically, it was just scanning that this person said CC at some point. Camp check, and then that would alert me that somebody did a camp check. Um, this one was to alert me that something has been charmed. That I think that one was, I think pe back then people could yoink mobs with charm. Uh, they changed that. Um, loom roll. So I was just, I wanted to keep track of who was winning what, what which, uh, what loom was getting won. So I just copied and pasted this in here so I could build it. So somebody won some loom. It would just tell me this person one loom that type of loom that's all uh, so it would be like arm loom encrusted chest loom encrusted so basically it would just be like johnny one you know, loom arms johnny one loom chest so it just kind of help me keep track of who was winning all the loom in the, the hole uh, what is this quickness haste what i do here that's uh, probably just a haste buff i don't know what i was doing with that i was probably playing an enchanter but i just dropped them down into old uh, if I don't want to delete them, I might want to use them later. I just drop them down to old. And if I check old, it'll parse all these things. If I uncheck it, 
it won't parse it. So you don't have to use that, right? Just like all these classes in here, if I'm playing a if I'm playing a druid, I'm going to uncheck all these class specific things because I don't want them being parsed. I do want my general caster stuff for all my casters um, kind of stuff. So hopefully that's understandable to you. There's a lot more over here. So like with overlays, um, you can see what the default overlay is. So like <laughs> I, I typed default wrong or something. But basically right here is where the message is going to pop up. That's my default message spot is right there. And as you can see, it's right above my where I'm looking like this is my central area that I'm looking at so it's it's right there in my information so um, you can set that wherever you want you can set your timer overlays my timer overlays are over here so they're gonna kind of stack up over here for like bosses and stuff like that um, yeah I guess I renamed that I guess I named that wrong property how do you change that whatever um, yeah, it gets, it gets, it, you can get a little more complex, but that's the basics of Gina. It's very complex, but once you get your trigger set up or somebody shares some triggers with you, it's very nice. It's very easy. It's absolutely not necessary. I've grown so accustomed to having the speech and tells and stuns and taunts and is viz on and viz off. Like it's almost part of the game to me now. Um, just have those extra little alerts. Um, so I, I love Gina. Um, I use it all the time. Highly recommend it. Here, I'll just, um, real quick, I'll try to demonstrate the, the chat. Let me see if I can get somebody to chat with me. Who oh. Let me look for somebody that's not doing anything. Offline, maybe. Let's see if a little level 10 will talk to me. Well, a little, little 10. Well, let's try this guy. Tell. Tell. Yeemar. Hi there. Is this server pretty active? So that's up here in the chat. I guess I got it set to use chat windows. Uh, use tell windows. Uh, down here. Hi, is this server pretty active? Just trying to get a response to see if the Gina will work. Somebody talk to me. Big Dud tells you. Yeah, I think so. There you go. Big Dud tells you. Yeah, I think so. Palomar tells you, I think so. I'm sort of new, but I have a couple of friends that told me this was a good server. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, you know, that's what it sounds like when people send me tells or group chat. I, I you know, some people might find that annoying, but um, I like not having to constantly look at the chat and I can just kind of do what I'm doing. You know, when you get playing this game, you get busy. Because tells you, it all depends on what you consider active. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys for responding. Appreciate it. Hopefully you see the video. Give me, give me a comment if you guys see this video. Anyway, um, let me move on to the next thing. All right, next tip is um, I'm, I'm going to run over to the Nexus. So while I'm doing that, I'll just do the next tip. Oop, I'm running the wrong way. It's a good thing I have this map telling me which way I'm running. Um, next tip is camp checks, right? So camp checks... There, there is no such thing as camps in this game anymore. Um, DBG, Daybreak Games, Dark Paul, whatever they're called now. Um, they don't have the resources anymore to go around and try to police player problems. So basically, they just kind of, 
you know, did what they could to say, hey, you know, play nice, but, you know, we, we can't enforce this stuff. Um, so what that means is you can't really enforce camps, right? You just It's impossible to police when you have nobody to police it. So officially there are no camps anymore. Like if you're, you get one mob, you can camp one spawn point or something like that. You can stand on the named and camp it like that that's your really legit recourse but in the end the community kind of polices um and you know while officially there is no do i gotta heal her or anything I need to just, um, so i gotta have that in my inventory i guess it's been so long spire stand anyway so um while i wait for this yeah, so camp checks are still a thing. Camps don't exist, but the community still uh, still respects camps for the most part. We acknowledge camps. Uh, every server had their own camps, but, you know, camp boundaries and borders. But, you know, for the most part, like, you know, if you're in Frenzy, don't go pulling from the Archmage or, you know, Lord. If you're in, uh, if you're in, uh, uh, assassin uh, supplier camp you know don't go pulling from uh, the siege or something like that unless there's nobody down there you know, like if people are down in the camp calling the camps like that they're trying to take their named you know pulling their XP mobs that's one thing you know everybody needs XP try to respect the boundaries they're gray areas you know what I mean um you know, just if you're agitating them, don't. That's it. Just be chill. There is no camps, but the community will, you'll get a reputation. And, you know, if that doesn't bother you, you want to have a reputation of being a butthole, then by all means, be a butthole and deal with that, you know. So, um, but for the most part, everybody's pretty chill. Um, you know, I've been in arguments myself where people have been messing with the camps. Um, usually like i'll play like i'm heated or something like that just to you know show anger in chat or something like that but in reality i'm just like uh you know it's a thing i gotta do it's a game i gotta play to keep you guys off my mobs you know um you know so just you know for the most part everybody's pretty much chill but it only takes two percent of people to kind of ruin 80 percent of people's good time so um i you know the community promotes camps. Officially, there is no such thing. I just respect people. Respect their groups. If they're not killing XP mobs, if they're too slow, and your your group's slamming it, then by all means, you know, you know, don't let it sit there and go to waste just because somebody wants to claim something. But don't go in there sniping their name and stuff like that, trying to ruin their time. You know, it's not worth it. It's a video game. Just chill, relax. Let's, let's all have fun. But uh, the point of this tip is do camp checks. Do it and shout. CC, camp check. If somebody says it's camped, great. Um, but do know, like, if they don't say something, it's still on you to go down there and take a look, right? So, just nobody's obliged to call their camps. Um, that That's on you. That's your responsibility to see if something's camped or not by going there and actually looking. <laughs> so, just keep that in mind. Um, try to be respectful of other players. Try to be respectful of their camps. Uh, camps are kind of what makes EverQuest unique. They were never meant to be. This this whole game and the whole play style that I love of this game is completely an accident. Now, I love Brad McQuaid's game design methods and theories. I think he's highly unique. I never thought I, I never thought he was so unique when, when I was younger, but as I'm older, I realize now his game design and theory and philosophy is super unique compared to just everybody else. I didn't realize it was that much of a unicorn um, <clears throat> until I was older and just realized how other people thought. But uh, even even his game design didn't mean for this to happen. Um, how EverQuest came to be and camping and just kind of chilling and sitting in a spot and grinding for hours and hours at a time. That's not what they designed the game to be. It's just kind of what it became and what the players just kind of did and what the players wanted. It's, it's just kind of what the players did you know they they had this environment and they, they thought that was the funnest thing to do 
So, you know, this very unique game style that I enjoy, it's a complete accident. Uh, it wasn't even designed to be like that. They actually tried to thwart it uh, in many, many ways and just made it better in some ways, <laughs> made it worse in some ways. So, um, I guess the point, just be chill with other players, you know, try not to, you know, to, to a 20 year old game, older than 20 years now. Um, look at this graphics. Yeah. Like that, she was the hotness back in the day, right? <laughs> it's funny. But yeah, just be chill. Uh, try to respect other people, other people's camps, you know. If you're agitating somebody, you know, just try not to do that or just talk with them. Be like, look, man, I'm not trying to agitate you, you know. Can we talk about it? And if they're they're unreasonable and they're just like, F off, then just F off, you know what I mean? Don't, don't take it to heart. Um, also, stand your ground, though. If you got some bully coming in and trying to take your stuff, don't let them do it. Um, train their face in as far as I'm concerned. You know, just don't get caught doing it. And uh, have fun overall, I think. You know, don't let the neg little bit of, little tiny bit of negativity that are in games get to you. There's a lot of people who have been playing these ga this game for 20 years. There's a lot of people that know the very detailed ins and outs of this game. So, um, you know, don't... don't uh, don't get too caught up in it, you know, because in the end, three months from now, you're probably not even going to be playing it, just like me. I'll probably have moved on. Uh, you know, it's a fun experience for the first couple expansions, and then, you know, it's like time to move on to the next thing, or life pulls you away, or something like that. So, you know, just chill out, have fun, you know what I mean? That's that's kind of this tip. Wow, I'm sitting here waiting for the Nexus. How long does this take? Oh, my God. All right, I'm going to cut it out. The reason why I'm trying to go to the Nexus is I want to show you, show you picks. So um, let me let me blink it here and I'll start talking about picks because I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show you a pick. So maybe I'll just be able to tell you. Okay, so picks are instances. This whole zone, this whole map can be an instance. They can have 15 versions of this with 15 Nexus Psychons and 15... Uh, Bandit camps, if there's enough people in here spawning enough picks. Right now, there's not. I think I'm the only one here. So, there's only one pick. If I type pick, it's going to tell me this is the only instance of the zone available. Oh, wow. So, I got I to gotta sit here for five minutes still waiting for this portal. Um, I do recommend hotkeying it when you start. It's just slash pick. So, you can just go to a pick. You can you can change your pick, I think, every five minutes or something like that. Every three or five minutes, it'll tell you. So you hit pick, a window will pop up right here. It'll give you a list of all the picks and the population. 20 people, 30 people, 50 people. Sometimes when you start these newbie zones, it'll be like 100 people, 150 people, 100 people, 80 people. So just, just know if you're trying to play with friends or you're trying to... Uh, join up with somebody or you found a group but they're grayed out because they're in a different pick their their party information might be grayed out um, it should show you like if you join a group when you hit pick and the window pops up and it shows you all the instances it'll show you how many of your party members are in each each one of them because your party might be split up so it might say you got three of them in this pick two of them in this pick one of them in that pick but you can see which ones your party members are. So just understand, like, when you join a group or something like that, you just say, basically, just say, hey, which pick? And the group leader will tell you, and we're going to do pick five. Or we're not sure yet. We're, we're just forming, and we're, we got to check all the different picks for an open camp. You know, you guys might want Orc Hill but, or the Bandit Camp, but you got to find a pick where it's open. So um, that's basically picks. They're just instances. Now... They do have another version of instances for raid zones. Um, let me let me get up to uh, let me get up to the uh, the nexus and see if I can show you the pick window, and I'll tell you about the raid instancing. I know. While I'm waiting, I'll tell you about origin. So at level five, man, I need a new mouse. It keeps coming unplugged. At level five, everybody gets origin. An origin is basically a 30-minute return to your uh, 
um, guild master, right? So it's great for spellcasters. You can bind. You just bind. You need to sell or go get new spells. You just origin out to your to your master. Sell whatever you gotta sell. Buy your new spells. Gate back. You're right back into action. But it's great for all classes because it's really nice to be able to just port back. How you find that is in your alternate abilities, your AA abilities, which I don't even know how to get to. Let's see. Uh, not in there. EQ. Claims, mail, mercenaries, help, storyline, actions, advanced loot, audio triggers, character. Alright, so it's letter V for me. Alternate advancements, V. Um, in general, should be under O, origin, boom. You just hit create hotkey, pop it down here on your bar, then you can origin out. Oh my goodness. I should be porting soon. About to become active, stand inside the circle. And have a shard to find your person. I'm ready. Come on, port me up to the Nexus. It's been many, many years since I've been up there. But anyway, that's Origin. So, your AA advancement at level 5, you automatically get it. Just hit hotkey. Um, you can check your Origin location by using char info. Char info. Yeah, so I'm bound at Trachodon's Teeth, but my origin is Steamfunt Mountains. So, it basically shows you two buying points. Very good. Remember that at level 5 that you have origin, that's all. Everybody gets it. Every class gets it. Just an easy way to bounce back. Whee! Going to the Nexus! I haven't been to the Nexus. And probably a few TLPs at least. I don't... I don't... I only made it to pop once on one of the TLPs. I don't even know how. Alright, so let's see. How do we get to... Plane of Knowledge. Shadow Haven. Bizarre. So south. I just want to go to Bizarre. Is there a pick here? Nope. I'm just hoping there's so many mules in the Bizarre that there's multiple picks. I don't know. I don't even know if, I don't even know if there can be multiple picks of the Bizarre. Oh wow, this brings back memories. I remember killing myself here when I was leaving the game. I was killing my necromancer for soul shards, deleveling him just so I'd sell the soul shard because they were worth more than the level. Alright. Is there any picks here? No. I'm not going to be able to find a pick on this server. 100% won't be able to. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kind of like looking around like, where do I go? Um... Showing all my stuff. Oh, I can't sell that. Is that no trade? Wait a second. Why is that no trade? Is that because I equipped it, or did it become no trade? Because I could have swore that was tradable. I wonder if it was tradable only until I equipped it. I think. And I just decided, you know what? Screw that. I'm not selling it, and I equipped it. Anyway. um... Yeah, the priest, uh, the priest of Discord, um, basically the priest of Discord looking dude, um, allows you to have raid instances. There's lockout timers. I'm not an expert on them. Um, you know, the raid leaders usually deal with that. I never really bothered, like, as a player. I'm just like, I only raided with my guilds anyway, so I wasn't trying to, like, join other people's raids let's see tribute player information faction standing alternate advancements this is like alt control z alt z no what's that i forget the button but basically they have it set up to where you can do like nagafin and vox and 
all the raid bosses, the planes. You can have your own guild instance with all that stuff. So you can go clear it, raid it on your own. Um, you don't have to worry about anybody else. I think it's like once every five or seven days. There's a lockout timer once you get loot or something like that. So you don't have to fight for overworld stuff. Um, usually on the TLPs, there's one or two big D, uh, you know, big you know raid guilds that monopolize that, and then the rest of rest of us are just like it's not even worth our time, or you know we're too casual. We're not doing that. I'm not wasting my time trying to chase after and fight over overworld spawns um, or non-instant spawns. But uh, basically, it just spawns a version of the whole zone. Like for, um, for example, um, oh, what's the dragon in Sibylus? I forget his name now. Wow, it just popped out of my head. But yeah, the basically the diseased, undead dragon in st the basement of Sibylus. Like it just spawns the whole Sibylus zone. Like the king could be up, all the camps could be up. Like you just get your whole instance of the zone. And you can go in there and kill the boss. So you do that. I think it's every five days or every seven days or something like that. But usually guilds will have a schedule. They'll, you know, two or three nights a week. They'll say, all right, this night we're going to do this, this, and this. And then on this night we're going to do that, that, that. And then, you know, Saturday night we're going to do these three or four bosses. And it'll change per thing. But it's a nice way of doing it. You can usually, everybody can get pretty well geared up and you can get what you want to get. Uh, different methods of doing it, you know, with dragon kill points or paying with plat. They were doing on the last one was popular. You just you just buy it with chrono and plat, you know. Uh, I made some chrono and plat just from buying it and then reselling it. Like that was legit. You could do it. Like the way they the way they looked at it. Like if I could buy something for cheap enough to where I could resell it and make profit, people didn't really want it. You know what I mean? So. Um, and then all the plat and chrono got split between all the raiders. So instead of earning points, you're actually earning real coin, real in-game coin when you raid. And that real in-game coin is the currency that you use to buy the stuff with. So it was actually a really interesting way when you first think about it. You're like, that's pretty cheesy. That's greedy. And then you think about it. And it's like, actually, it makes a lot of sense. Like, put your money where your mouth is. Everybody, you split all that evenly. So if you're on the raid participating, you're getting stuff. Even if you don't buy anything, instead of getting some worthless virtual dragon kill point, you're, you're getting 10k plat or a chrono or whatever, you know? Or a, f a eighth of a chrono or something. But you're getting something that's building up, you know? And as you, if you're broken, it's your first one, and you can, it gives you the ability to save up, and then you can buy important stuff. Uh, if you're paid, like a lot of people like me or veterans with, you know, potentially hundreds of chrono, yeah, we have a bit of an advantage, right? But if we're paying top tier for that stuff, that money is just getting sent to the guild. You're just getting sent to you, the other player. So I kind of did like that system in a lot of ways. It was very interesting. We used that in our last, uh, in our last TLP. Anyway, enough sitting here. Um... You know, raids and raid guilds, you gotta look into all that yourself, but there's always plenty of them to join. I never have a problem with joining... Where's this guy? I never have a problem with joining any of them. Hey, here's a parcel vendor. Yeah, I never have a problem finding a guild or anything like that. It's No matter what class I play, there's guilds out there. Most of them are pretty chill. Some of them are kind of rip-off-y. Um... But for the most part, people are pretty, pretty chill. What's this guy selling? Look at all this stuff. He's rich. Look at all that plat. He wants a lot of plat for a lot of stuff. Crazy boy. What are you selling? Interesting. I don't even recognize half of the stuff they're selling because I never played these expansions. Alright, so let me think. I think that might be about it for tips and tricks. Let me look at um Let me look at a thing. Okay, so auto split on, anonymous role playing. Uh use tell windows, I would take that off. Allow auto duck, I would take that off just because you can get yourself in weird situations. Allow auto stand is good because it'll get you out of some weird situations. 
join general channels is good uh load ui skin copy layout these are good if you've played before like i copied all this from my necromancer this is the general layout that i like um that's why these things are grayed out like that was my staff of null that was some elixirs what was that my bobble um my little pet rabbit my fungi covered staff my circlet of shadow don't have them on my mage obviously so that's why they're red but that's why they're there um what was i willing to buy willing to buy your sacrifice 300 plat per i don't think anybody ever sold me a sacrifice tash pet charm break please check if it needs uh because i was charming on my necro yeah so uh loot i would have um advl loot as a hotkey I like who, just who target and guild status so I can who people. Uh, pick, I would have. Looking for group, I would have. And then anything else you want, like drag, corpse drag, if you're going to drag corpses or whatever. Let's finish looking through the settings, let's see. Hide players. I got my music down a little bit low. I got my environmental sounds off, so like wind and tunnel and stuff like that. I don't want to hear all that stuff. Combat music I have off. Uh, da, 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 bag so yeah it's pretty pretty standard stuff I don't see anything in here that's too too crazy that you really need to worry about you can do your gamma and your clip plane and all that stuff as you see fit mouse keys I use my different key settings mail Yeah, so nothing really, nothing crazy with options that I would recommend. Other than turning chat windows off, I don't like that. Um, trying to think, what else is there that I need to cover for getting started? Um, I think that's about it, you know? You just need to be a premium to play on the TLPs. So that means you need to do a, a credit card or you need to buy a chrono from another player or from the store or like I said you could go on websites and buy third party or something just be careful what websites you use um, I would recommend just buying it from DBG buy your first one from them or your first month and then I think you'll be able to earn Chrono if you're if you're uh, you'll be able to get at least one or two um, in the first month you'll be able to pay for the next month uh, if you're if you're thrifty enough and efficient enough, um, just by playing and earning loot and selling loot and you know not if you're trying to deck your character out, you'll never make it. But if you sacrifice a couple pieces of good gear and sell it and trade it for Chrono, um, you'll be able to pay for yourself after first month um, just by trading in game to people. So there's so many people who've been playing this game for. These TLPs for 10 years, they got so much chrono, they just they throw it around at the beginning anyway. A um, couple other things like this mask, uh, Guys of the Deceiver, uh, is usually limited time until like Kunark, you can get it to drop, but it's it drops so much by the time like it's about to go away, it's very easy to get. J boots, um, usually pretty easy to get. The rest of the stuff doesn't really matter too much, I don't think. Um, but that's about it. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can think of anything else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna origin back. I'm gonna go back to my home. I love Akadon and Steamfront. And then, uh, I guess maybe, let me talk about the, my COVID experience, I guess, if you want to hang out and listen to that. Other than that, I think the tips and tr tricks are done. Um, if they're not, I'll, I'll put them before the COVID stuff, if I can. Um, I think I touched on everything. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, oh, soul binders. So every city will have a soul binder. Soul binders just basically bind you. That way it's not only casters who can bind people. You don't have to be a melee going, Can somebody bind my soul, please? I'll pay you five plaque, you buy my... Every city, or and there's some places even outside of the city, like um, in Oasis, will have soul binders. In East Common Tunnels, will have soul binders. 
Just hit find when you're in a city. And it should be under S for soul. Soul binder. Boom. Every city pretty much has a soul binder. So if you're a melee class, you don't have to worry about like trying to find a caster to bind you anymore. You can just go hit up the soul binder and be good to go. Where's this guy at? Usually right near the entrance or something like that. It's not usually too deep into the city. <clears throat> anyway, while well, I'm looking for a soul binder. Oh, where's he at? Over here. So you would just, I don't want to bind my soul, but you would just say, you would just hail him and then click bind your soul or say bind your soul and then boom, he'll bind you. And then that'll be your bind spot. So very, very nice ad, you know, just to remove that uh, melee restriction where melees can't bind themselves and they got to sit there and beg a caster for a bind. It removes the social aspect, but um, I, I like, I think it's a good ad. Um, especially like in the EC tunnel, you can just bind in there. That's usually where I bind at. I bind my melees in the EC tunnel. That way, if I'm on a raid or something and I die while I'm waiting for a res, I can I can sit in the tunnel and watch auctions and goof off or whatever. Okay, so all the tips and tricks are done. I think I think we covered everything uh, for the most part. Uh, classes. So I guess we can get into classes a little bit, like how they play out um, on a TLP. So, any class is good. I mean, this is EverQuest. Every class is going to find a group. I think... I think it's hard for rogues. And it's harder for rangers a little bit. Um, to get groups. Just because people know rogues don't do great damage. Uh, until later. Rangers aren't great tanks. Actually, let me take the rangers back. There's usually a tank shortage, so that, I, that allows rangers to jump in and fill that position very easily. I played two or three rangers to epic level, uh, got epics and, you know, raided with them, and most of the time I, I was main tank when I was leveling up in groups, and I, I had a little bit of a harder time getting groups as a ranger, but uh, I was able to get them because people were desperate for tanks, so it really depends on the tank ratio of the server if the tanks are low. Rangers are super viable. Um, obviously, clerics are never going to have a hard time finding groups. Um, druids will even not have a hard time finding groups because they're like makeshift clerics. A lot of people make do with druids um, as they level up because there's not enough healers. Shamans, same thing. People love shamans more than druids a lot of times. Um, but yeah, shamans, druids... Any healer is going to be, like, wanted just because, you know, you got to have a healer. Uh, enchanters are so OP with their charm pets and their buffs and stuff like that. Um, they're, they're snapped up. I think they're probably the most snapped up class for groups um, that there is. Now, fortunately, look at this mouse. Mouse is freaking constantly. I need a new mouse so bad. It's like, look, it's all slow now because it's, I gotta readjust it. Um, channers, I think there's a lot of them because they're so OP. A lot of people play main channers um, and box channers and stuff like that. There, there's usually a lot of them to choose from. Just the crowd control in, a, in the, of itself is needed. All right, so just with that and then the buffs, the clarity and the haste and the slows. And the magic debuffs. And um, did I say clarity? Yeah, crack is like so big. And then on top of that, they're the most damage doing class with the charm. It's, it's, it's just, they're just everything. They're everything except for a healer. If they could heal and, and, and tank, then you wouldn't even need anything else. Like they're so OP, it's stupid. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't mind if they nerfed the crap out of charm. And made it like less than a mage, less than a necro DPS. Because um, they would still have so much to offer on top of the charm. It's just they wouldn't carry the 50% of the group's damage on top of everything else. But, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm not calling for an or I, I like the fact that they're so OP. Even that they're so OP and I love the class, I don't play them 
as much as I used to. I used to play the mage a lot, or the enchanter a lot. I just, I get tired of charming, to be honest with you. The charm breaks are consistent, and it's just like, you'll be sitting there grouping, and you feel like, I don't even want to go AFK to take a P because my charm might break. It's just, you know, why not just be a mage, and I can do all that stuff, and... I can go AFK whenever I want, and I, I can look away from the keyboard for three seconds without having to worry about getting slaughtered uh, by my pet. So, you know, there is that downside to it. I might I might do an Enchanter again. I really, um, I like all the pet classes. I like the Enchanter. I love the, the Mage. It's really great because it's so chill, and it does really good damage. The pet does really great damage. Combined with your nukes, does really great damage. And when you hit 55 as a mage and you have Call of the Hero, you are like king. You're king shit. Like, you'll never have another problem getting a group. It might be a little bit slow, because people are going to pick an enchanter over you. They might even pick a necro over you. Um, honestly, probably necro and enchanter or mage are probably about the same desire for groups for damage. Um, but, yeah, when you get Call of the Hero, though, people are like... They're, they're going to want you in your group because it just makes it so so much easier to find replacements when you have Call of Hero. You can just bring somebody in and then summon them down. Like if you're deep in Chardock, you don't want to have to climb all the way back out or pour out and then climb all the way back down. And then you risk people taking your camp and then you're losing all the experience from doing that. If you have Call of Hero, man, you just, all right, your rep's here. See you later. And the dude leaves and origins out and you invite the new person in you just summon them down it just it just makes it so much easier so people love having mages in the group once you're 55 and have called a hero um that's not even saying how useful it is for like raids and stuff like that but um necros i love necros their pets aren't as damaging but their dots are great and they're very chill to play and they have a crap ton of utility and solo utility and feign death is just super nice to have you know you want to go fk or you get into a situation it's just like feign death you know um if you get a fungus covered staff and they circle a shadow you're 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 great that that's fungi staff is going to keep your lich running so you basically have self clarity you don't even care if there's a what who cares if there's an enchanter in your group you know what i mean like, I think at some point it's, like, even better than Clarity, so you're just going to have it on anyway. Um, so you're not really reliant on that Enchanter. You're, the, there was a dot revamp for Necros, so their spells, their, um, their Venom, Venom of the Snake line of spells, uh, all stack. So it costs a lot of mana, but it does a lot of damage. So basically, you, you, you pull a mob and you just cast one dot on them. That's it. You don't want to do any more than that. You do any more than that, you're gonna pull all the aggro, and you're just gonna be wasting mana. So like, a sound of a loud steam engine, a large propeller echoes over the horizon. What the hell is that? Um, so as far as pet classes, they're all good. Mage, I consider Enchanter a pet class because people are 100% gonna want you to charm. Um, Necro, great. So you can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, it's just what level of intensity do you want? You want chill of the mage and the necro. Um, wizard is like people don't like inviting wizards because they're purely mana dependent on their DPS, which kind of sucks. Um, I would honestly, I would like to see wizards nukes do a little bit more damage, um, and I think they would be more wanted. Um, but they are really trade class to AFK on. If you just want to kind of do other things and watch YouTube videos while you're grouping and stuff like that, there's nothing going to beat a wizard because you're going to be in a group. This is what you're going to do. Be in a group. Pool's going to come up. Boom, 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 boom. You kill that pool super fast so they can get on the next one. Or maybe they pulled three. You you blast two of them down into nothing. But now your mana is like down to here. So you just got chill for like five minutes while your mana gets back up. So it's like a class that you could just nuke when you need to strategically and then kind of just chill and med back up so you're not really like scheming the scamming the group um it's just a different play style you know you you nuke it out and then you gotta regen that mana but yeah, i think rogues and wizards you're probably gonna have a harder time finding a group 
I don't I haven't played a rogue since like 2012 13 ish I played a rogue so I don't I don't know I just know I know what I'm looking at I know what other groups want well, you know the last thing they want is a rogue or a wizard probably for DPS they'd rather have a good pet class and enchanter like what's better than one enchanter two enchanters right it's like their pet damage is so ridiculous the only time you don't want an enchanter is when you're ripping things up so much and everybody else is that you actually don't have enough mobs that's the only time you don't want an enchanter doing a pet where you might say hey enchanter release your pet because that's a block of experience that we could be killing every 20 minutes which is rare to be that efficient where you're just everything's dead um depending on the camp or you could if it's that bad you could just move to a better camp um yeah so enchanter mage necro they're all going to come before a uh, rogue or a um a rogue or a wizard i mean i would rather have a ranger in my group than a than a rogue because at least they're doing about they're doing about the same damage and you get a lot more utility out of a ranger he can tank he can off tank he can snare, he can sew, you know, he can pull. You often send the ranger out for pooling if you have a tank. Ranger's pooling. Go go earn your keep, boy, you know. Um, as far as tanks go, uh, obviously warrior's the best tank for raids, but for XP group, uh, they have a hard time keeping aggro a lot of times. Now, I was going to play a warrior on the last TLP. I was going to main a warrior, but they nerfed the... Um, J boot aggro so if you did this like five times it would be like a taunt like you literally would only and it would be like an aoe taunt so when you're fighting you would just have to be like this and that was your taunt which made it like that was beautiful i was like you just did J boot and then they you also had uh fungus covered great staff aggro so if you i don't have that on this character but if you click that it was instant cast too that would pull a lot of aggro like i was i was tanking as a twink necro with that uh as like a level five level 10 necro i would cast that four or five times and it would suck all the mobs on my group onto me like just with four or five casts so i was actually planning on um uh doing a warrior just because those two items kind of resolved the aggro issue that makes warriors kind of suck and they nerfed it right when it, on the on the expansion not the expansion on a tlp that i wanted to play a warrior because that would make it easier playing a warrior um they nerfed it so now you're just a warrior again relying on procs and stuff like that so i was like oh man that sucks uh so i think warriors are would be great if they had better taunting abilities aoe taunt that you could use every 10 seconds or something like that but uh, they're just such a pain in the ass. I just hate trying to keep aggro, especially when you have multiple mobs and no enchanter. It's just like it's such a pain. Keep everything off the healers, and that's too that's too intense for me. I want more of a chill experience. So that leaves you with paladin or SK or ranger. Now, paladin's great. I mean, at, at that point, you're just the, the paladin and the shadow knight are they're the two best group uh tanks so at that point you're just do you want to be a paladin or do you want to be a shadow knight right do you want to have heals and reses and stuns and flashes or do you want to uh spam your dot for aggro and have feigned death and invisibility and all that stuff now me i i towards i lean towards the utility of the shadow knight i kind of like that more than i like a paladin so i usually go shadow knight um and then you have to, if you're a Shadow Knight, you want to, you want to be an Ogre or a Troll. So, uh, I, I I like the Ogre. I like the stun ability. Like, the no stun from the front. But at the same time, that regen from the Troll or Ixar, uh, for that matter, is really great. So, um, I don't know. It's a, it's a decision. But that's the tank. But either way, if you're a tank, you're not going to have a hard time finding a group. Even as a ranger tank, which is considered like a lesser tank by a lot of people. Uh, which is funny because in an XP setting, a ranger is a great tank. Especially if they're higher level and decent geared. Um, they're, they're probably even like the best XP tank 
just because they have such snap aggro. Their flame lick spell is just complete and utter aggro. And they have no problem whatsoever holding aggro, multiple mobs, whatever. Uh, and the only, the only downside is they're not a full knight, so they're, they don't have as much defensive capability, but they are a little squishy. But as long as they're higher level or and have decent gear, you won't even feel that in an XP group at all. So um, tanks, tanks are good. Rangers might be a little. You might you might fill the pooler spot. You might fill the tank spot. You might fill like the DPS spot. I think because they're so compatible, uh, it adds up to being not a horrible experience finding group as a ranger. But you know you're still that unde undesired versus everybody else class. Uh, as far as shamans and druids, obviously they can heal like clerics, so they're wanted uh, shamans more so than druids, I think, later on, because they have uh, slows and buffs and stuff like that, so a lot of people love the shamans. Shamans do make a big difference in a group. They just You'll be in a group that's struggling, and then a shaman will come up, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, we're not struggling anymore. Um, they just make that big of a difference. Bards are always wanted. Um, they just have great. They got mana regen. They got uh, you know all the stuff that enchanters have. Um, so and they make great poolers as well. So they go out, they pool, they come back, they they do little charms, they mezzes. So bards are really fun, really great uh, for group experience. Um, I don't find them that fun for later on. I, they're great in raids too if you just want to be lazy. They're like the ultimate lazy raider. A lot of times you're just in a group and your job is just stand there and play songs. Like stand stand there and play songs and don't do anything else. Like <laughs> So um, they, they can be a pretty good uh, raid experience. I think enchanters are extremely powerful, extremely fun, but extremely busy. Um, and what class am I missing? The warriors, paladin, shadow knight, Clerics, druids, shamans, necros, mages, wizards, rogues, rangers. Uh, oh, when rangers and when they start getting like endless quivers and AAs, they are like total DPS cannons. They just their roll completely flips, and everybody wants you, and they want you. At, they're the best DPS in the game, other than like an enchanter. And they're just awesome, and they're chill to play as well because it's like a chill kind of thing. So, um, yeah, they're very fun later on in later on expansions um, from a DPS standpoint. There's there's just nothing like you're just sitting here. I remember there were times where I was a ranger in a raid, and the dragon would be like that tree down there, and my arrow would just be going, Pshh. and I'd be standing this far back, shooting the dragon that far away. Just because I'm standing outside of his AoE ability. So everybody else is having to dodge the dragon's AoE. And I'm just standing here going, doink, doink, with me and like, you know, six other rangers all just going, doo, 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 like little little distant turret shot shooters. It was the funniest looking thing. Um, very, very fun experience. So, yeah, that's pretty much all the classes. But in the end, they're all good. Even like a rogue, you're not going to like be sitting out looking for a group forever same with a wizard i might i might do a wizard this time just kind of do hard mode and just see what that's like i don't know i don't know what i'm going to play this time uh i really i really like the chill experience of a necro i love their dots are powerful now i love that you just need to cast one and then sit down and chill um i don't know i'm i'm always torn i'm always torn between mage Necro, Enchanter, I love Rangers and their utility. As far as tanks, I love Shadow Knights. Um, I might try a Wizard this time. I I know if you're a good Wizard and you know what to cast during raids and what to cast when, it makes a big difference, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, that's the classes. Uh, in the end, just play what, play what you think is fun. If you think playing a Cleric is fun, play a Cleric. If you want to play a Paladin... Play a paladin. Like it's 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 all it's all good. You're gonna find a group. You're gonna find a way. Nobody's gonna dish you from a raid. All classes are needed in raids. Um, you know, you'll find a raid group with the instance raiding. It's not a big deal to find a raid guild. Every guild can be a raid guild now. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of finding a group of people that 
you know, that don't get on your nerves much. That's basically it. Excuse me. You know, as long as they're not getting on your nerves, um, then, then you should be able to just be, have fun and have a good time. Okay, and before I do the outro, I was just thinking, let me add something about the chat interface. Uh, I think the chat, chat interface and the filters throws a lot of people off, so... I'm just going to kind of show you the basics of it and kind of show you what I do and my mindset behind it. So, first thing you want to do is your main chat window. Like, when... Let's see. Um, anyway. So, your main chat window. First thing I do, very first thing I do is I set up a couple windows here, right? I don't, I don't even know why this main bar is called auction. Let's see. Rename window. Yeah. So I would be like main. Um, I guess it, that was just like an auction window. So what I do is you start off with like a window and it has everything in it. What I tend to do is click on the tab, add new tab, right? So you can add as many tabs as you want. Add a couple tabs and then I'll create a new window. So I'll go uh, new chat window, right? And I'll put that over here and I'll add some tabs to it. So I'll do a tell tab. Um, I'll do a mine tab, meaning like my stuff, anything that pertains to me. I have a random tab so I can see like the rolls and the randoms that people do. So randoms are random 100 when you're like rolling for loot. Um, that way it doesn't get all mixed in with everything else and I can see what I rolled and what other people rolled. I'll have a combat tab that basically has all the basic combat stuff in it. So I could just, if I ever want to look back and see what I'm hitting for or see who's hitting me, and then if, on my pet class I'll usually have like a pet tab just so I can see what's going on with the pet. Um, but you can do whatever you want, and in here I'm not even using these, so I got two other two other tabs that I can use for different chats. I could put like a guild chat here, just you can have guild here in your main, but then you can also just have this with only guild so you can scroll back and reference it so you don't miss anything. And then, you know, whatever, if you have like auction channels or something here, I would probably have just so I, if I don't want that flooding my main chat, I can just click over and watch that while I'm doing stuff or whatever. But what what you want to do is once you create these tabs and kind of get an idea how you want to separate it, um, what I usually do is I'll take this, uh, uh, right click on it, filters, and here you can hit all. Right, so what I'll do is actually come over here to combat, and I'll just be like, filters, all. And it just basically plops everything into this combat tab. And then I'll come back over here and add what I want. So what I'm doing is I'm clearing out everything from the main chat. Just everything. And then I'll come back in here and add specifically what I want. So then I'll go to filters, I'd say, group, read. You just basically click on them. You can add your chat channels, so generals, auctions, whatever you want, all your melees. Like, see, I got my taunt message and my combat abilities in that chat, so I probably wouldn't want that. Or maybe I was playing a tank and I wanted to see my taunt messages in my main window. I'm not sure why I had that. I like to have my loot messages in there, other, who, um, destroyed item, item speech. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I want in there. Everything in here, I, I usually don't want melee stuff chat channel and that gives me a nice little main window for chat and then over here tells obviously the only thing I'm gonna want in here is tells so everything else is deselected the only thing selected is tells that way I have a window I can always reference my tells when people tell me something I can always come back I always usually use uh, timestamps where's the timestamps at timestamps I always use short hour hour minute minute good enough um, but I like to have timestamps, which is over here, just so I can see how long ago somebody sent me a tell, because it might have been an hour ago. Upgrade to all access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then mine is like my stuff, right? So let's see what I put in there. So I go to filter. I put my skills, my experience, my faction messages. I put some my hits, my being hit, stuff like that my spells wearing off, anything that deals with me, me getting hit or my spells is what I put in there. Obviously randoms is for like your random and I forget what filter that is so let me show you. Uh, doo, doo, doo. 
randoms. Ah, there it is. So it's actually a subfolder called random. So your roles, other roles, group roles, basically all. So everybody's randoms will go in there. Combat. Let's see what I got in there. Probably a lot of this melee stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the other, not my, not my melee stuff, like other people's melee stuff, other people's spells, you know, that kind of stuff is what I put in combat. And then pet, probably just filter pet responses, probably pet damages, so you said pet messages, furies, crits, um, that kind of stuff. So that's basically what I do. It's, it's a little confusing at first, and then just trying to figure out what goes where. I usually don't mess with the colors. Um, uh, da, 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 where's the colors at? I think it's in the options, actually. So if you go to chat, open options, yeah. So you can go in here and look at the different types of messages. And then in here, you can actually change things off, like achievement links. You can uh, have it show or not show and change a color. Um, I even forget how to even do it. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm not even sure how to. I mean, I guess it just shows you in here if it's turned on or turned off even, right? So I got a lot of stuff just even turned off. But you can go in here and um, change the color of the text messaging or you know your chat windows. I usually don't. Everything the colors in here are usually pretty pretty decent. I usually don't feel the need to do that. What I usually do is just want to kind of separate the chat windows out a little bit. Just so it's not all in one window. It makes it a little more organized. That's just my method. Everybody has their own ways. I I usually try to keep my UI set up. I usually try to keep this open. I, this is usually where your eyes are at. Like if you look, if you look at your character and you're in, if you're zoomed in, it's still about the same. Like look, look, just me walking. The ground is here. So the upper. 40% of my screen is where the monsters are and everything's at for just naturally and when you zoom out it's the same thing like most of this stuff down here is ground behind you you're actually looking your combat view or you know your world view is usually this upper 40% so I try to keep that clear um, and then I try to use this area down here for all the clutter and stuff like that so my chat windows my group so I can click on my members, my extended target, my target target, um, um, you know, uh, my, my action bars, that kind of stuff. I try to keep down here. My spell bar, my pet window, a lot of times I'll stick that down here or something too. Um, but I try to throw all that down in this area, organized. For me, my main, uh, my main vision is centered, right? So my casting bar is usually right here, I think. And I got my casting bar there. I usually will have notification bars here. So my, my main eyesight is here and here, right? So I can kind of keep it centered. And then I have my ex my side views a little bit. And then my eyes can come down here and read. My eyes can come down here and get information. That's just kind of how I like my layout. Everybody's going to be different. But the main re that's the main reason I try to keep up here clean. Instead of putting chat windows up at the top. You'll, be, you'll block all this and all you'll see is like the dirt. So it's just, that's just the way the game's kind of designed is most of the stuff that's going on is going to be in this top portion, right? Just from your normal view, either even zoomed in or zoomed out, it's going to usually be in that top portion. Even when I'm looking down a hole, 50% of my screen is just the dirt behind me, you know? So um, it's just kind of the way it works out. Anyway, I hope that was a little bit helpful. All right, now I'm going to move on to the, uh, to the outro. I hope you found the video fun, entertaining. I hope you enjoyed chilling along with me. Sorry about being out of breath a little bit. Like I said, COVID uh, hit me and I'm recuperating from it. But I have been wanting to do this video for a long time. Um, you know, just make a kind of how-to video, tips how to get into playing how to get into playing the TLPs. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later. Right, I'm going to miss this camp. I always, when I come here on a new TLP, I'm always so excited. I join a group, and I'm level 1, and I hit 5, and I get a crush bone, and do 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 And then like 2 or 3 weeks later, I come back here as a higher level, and there's, there's usually like just 1 or 2 people here 
grinding an alt or something, and it's just, it's just, it makes my heart sad because I'm like, if that's it, that's that was the experience. It's going to be over soon, and I know it because I've done this so many times. And it just, I get that nostalgic, sad feeling. I'm just like, oh man. And it's always here at this spot, so kind of getting that now. That I gotta log off for the video. I'm just like, Meh. all right. I'll see you guys later.